Hello, class. In this lesson, we're going to analyze regions that we're going to define by using systems of inequalities. So as a warm-up, I'd like you to graph each of these inequalities. Use two different planes, and then when you're done, you can compare your graphs with mine. So in letter A, we only have a variable y, so it's going to be a horizontal line. Now, y is less than or equal to 7. So since it could be equal to 7, we include the points on the line. Less than 7, we shade down. In letter B, we only have the variable x, so we're going to have a vertical line, and it's strictly greater than negative 3. So it's going to be dashed because it can't be equal to negative 3, and greater than we shade to the right. Okay, two more examples to try on your own. So try these, and I'll show you my answers. So these are both already in slope-intercept form for us, so they're pretty straightforward to graph. And in letter C, we're strictly less than 1 half x minus 4, so we shade down and use a dashed line. In letter D, we're greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 5. So we use a solid line because we include the points on, on the line in the solution set, and we shade above the line because it's greater than. Example 1, we're going to do a little informal proof. We want to prove that the area of the parallelogram is base times height by using what we know about the area of a rectangle and the area of right triangles. So we're going to do this by decomposition. And I might not have used this term in the previous lesson, but we've done decompositions. That's when we draw a rectangle around a region, and we subtract the right triangles and the rectangles from it. So see if you can draw a nice decomposition for this parallelogram. The base is B, and the height is H. So hopefully your diagram looks something like this. And I'm going to define this vertex on the top right as the point x, h. The height is given to us, but we don't know how far we are past that b, so I'm just going to call it x. And how can we use this to help us solve the problem? Well, now we have a rectangle. And the area of that rectangle is going to be x times h. And we have two right triangles. Now, we're, how do we figure out the areas of the right triangles? Well, we need their bases and their heights. Their heights are the same as the parallelogram. They're both h. But what about their bases? Well, the base of the parallelogram is b, but that's not the same as the base of the triangle. It also isn't x because x is the whole distance from the origin to this point over here. So what do we do? To find that distance, we take x and we subtract b from it. That's what's left over. I guess it's this segment. So we put all this together. The rectangle has an area of x times h, and we have two triangles, so 2 times 1 half base times height. And the base in this case is x minus b. And so now we can use the distributive property. And we simplify and get this expression. All right, the 2 and the 1 half cancel out. We distribute the h. And xh minus xh, those cancel as well. So we're just left with bh, which is the formula that we know for the area of a parallelogram. So now we're going to look at regions that we define with a system of inequalities. So here we have four inequalities. I'd like you to sketch them all on the same Cartesian plane, and then shade in especially where all of the regions intersect. That's going to be the polygon that we're analyzing. So try this on a piece of graph paper, and then I'll show you what my picture looks like. So if you graphed each inequality correctly, you should end up with a graph that looks similar to this one. So now we want to figure out what the vertices of our quadrilateral are. And this is nice because all of the points of intersection of, of these lines end up being lattice points. So what are the four vertices? We have these four points. And if you didn't believe those answers, you could always go back to your original inequalities, and you can solve each, of, um, solve each system. So for example, you can make a system with the first inequality and the second sort them as equations, and you just substitute. You have x plus 5 equals x minus 4. Solve for x, that's your x-coordinate. Plug it in for y, that's your y-coordinate. So you do that for each appropriate pair, and you would end up with the four vertices. But in this case, that's not necessary because these are lattice points, nice integer coordinates. So now we want to figure out what type of quadrilateral we have and how we can prove that. So what's the special name for this type of quadrilateral? Well, it has two parallel sides. Right, this side is what we get when we graph y is less than or equal to x plus 5, so the slope is 1. And this one 
is what we get when we graph y is greater than or equal to x minus 4. So both slopes are 1, so they're parallel. So it must be a trapezoid. Now what's the perimeter of this region? So the nearest hundredth. So try that on your own. Use Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. So I figure out the length of each side here. These are not simplified radicals. You should end up with these numbers. And we don't care about simplifying here because we're just going to round our final answer. And so we end up with about 30.96 units. And finally, let's find the area of this region. So see if you can decompose the region and then use that to figure out what this area is in the middle. So here is how I decompose the region. This triangle has an area of 4.5, this one has 10, and this one is 32. And we have the big rectangle. And so the rectangle has an area of 96. We subtract those three triangles, their areas, and we end up with 49.5 square units. This lesson we learned how to find the perimeter and area of regions that we described by using a system of inequalities. Thank you for watching this video.